Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're going to show how you can get set up on Steemit by creating an account. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do to create your Steemit account is simply browse to steemit.com. Once here, you'll just click on this sign up link. You'll then be asked to create an account name. This is how you'll be identified on the site. You'll then need to provide an email address that you'll verify through a link that Steemit will send to that address. And this will be followed by providing your phone number and verifying that number as well. At this time, the initial steps of account creation are complete, and you'll now be put on a waiting list for Steemit to review your account. 2,000 years later. I'm kidding. Currently, Steemit says that most accounts are approved within 24 hours, but some may take up to a week. Now, creating an account on Steemit is free to you, but there is an associated cost that's not passed down to you. This cost is one of the main reasons that your account needs to be verified and reviewed before being approved. As we mentioned in our intro video to Steemit, Steemit runs on top of the Steam blockchain. It costs Steam tokens to create an account. When you create your account in the way that we just went through, Steemit is supplying the Steam to cover the cost of creating that account. So in efforts to keep users from taking advantage of the fact that Steemit's covering this associated account creation fee, Steemit requires this verification and review process and attempts to enforce that each user is only signing up for one account. Now, with this in mind, there are other ways to create accounts on the Steam blockchain outside of creating an account directly on Steemit's website. And Steemit allows these accounts created from other methods to be used on Steemit.com. If you choose to go these other routes, though, you'll have to cover the sign-up fee yourself. I'll put a link in the description that provides info on these other account creation mechanisms if you're interested. But now let's jump back to where we were in following the standard process of creating an account. Once your account is approved, you'll receive a notification via email to finish creating your account. Included in this remaining process, Steemit will generate a master password for your account. This password will be a long string of alphanumeric characters. Back up this password. This is very important. There is no way for Steemit to recover your password if you lose it. Now I'm going to harp on this point a little bit more before moving on. So remember, if you start to accumulate Steam in your account, then your account has real monetary value. So it's crucial that you take care to back up your password because if you do happen to lose it, you'll lose access not only to posting and being active with your current username on the site, but perhaps even more importantly, you'll lose all the crypto in your account as well. It's also a good idea to save this password offline as well for extra security and in case of an event like a hard drive failure. Okay, so hopefully the importance of backing up your password sinks in. Now, after you've saved and taken the precautions to back up your credentials, you'll be asked to enter this generated password on the account creation screen and confirm that you understand that Steemit cannot recover lost passwords. And this will finish the formal account creation process. You'll then be able to navigate to steemit.com and log in with your new user and password. So as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward and simple process to go through to create your account. Now, once you're in, something that you probably want to do is navigate to your settings by clicking on your icon in the top right hand corner and then clicking on settings. Then set up your public profile settings. If you want your display name to be something different than your account name that you created, then you can specify this here. One reason you may want to do this is because the account name has a limited number of characters, so you may want your display name to be something longer, for example. Also, you can specify what your Steemit account is about to give others an idea of what to expect when they show up to your page. You can also specify a website if you have one, or even a YouTube channel or Twitter account or whatever, and you can also specify your profile pic and cover image. Currently, you can't upload these images directly, but instead you have to point to a URL where the images reside. So here we've pointed to the images that we uploaded on Twitter and used the same ones here for Steemit. There are other websites as well whose sole purpose is for things like this, where you just upload an image to the site for the purpose of having access to the URL that points to this image. You can find these sites by Googling something along the lines of Steemit profile picture URL, for example. So that's about it for the initial account creation and setup. Once you get in and get your profile settings configured, you can start posting or looking at what's trending or start to find users that you want to follow. Just start exploring the site. 
and we'll get into a lot more detail about the general activity and contribution on the site in a later video as well. Before wrapping up, I have one more note to mention. We stressed on the point about backing up your password. Aside from this, there are some additional pieces around security that we need to touch on, and it'd be best to go ahead and get these concepts sorted out before we go further with Steemit. So in the next video, we'll be covering the concept of account permissions and the public-private key pairs that are generated for your account upon creation and how you should be using these keys. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Steemit goodness.